Hi everyone, it's Nicola, also known as Cool Cat VFX. In today's video, we're going to create little butterflies. It's a perfect effect to add life in a natural or fantasy environment. We'll be using Unreal Engine 5.1 and Niagara. To make those cute butterflies, we'll create models inside Unreal Engine, make a simple 3D mesh using Blender, edit free to use textures using Photoshop, and play around with Niagara emitters modules. So let's get started, people! As usual, we start the tutorial by taking some time to have a clear overview of the FX components. We got butterflies, trails, and soft particles. To make our butterfly effect, we'll need, well, you guessed it, butterflies. So we start by making this component. Before creating anything, we need to figure out how butterflies move around. This will highly influence which technical solution we are going to use to simulate some movement. And we got this perfect video from the Science Magazine YouTube channel showing us in slow motion the movement of a butterfly's wings and how each wing bit affects air around it. The result of this observation is that butterflies rotate their bodies with each wing bit. This waggle movement makes them move up and down depending on their tilt angle and waggle movement strength. This is the core component that makes the movement quite erratic. That's quite interesting. So, how are we going to replicate this complex motion? Well, as usual, there isn't only one way of doing things in the VFX. For this tutorial, we'll explore a solution based around a model that will simulate the erratic local movements of a butterfly on a 3D plane and a particle system that simulate a butterfly's behavior with random variations in velocity and direction. However, it will be quite difficult to exactly replicate how butterflies actually move. So we'll do what we usually do in real-time environment, we simplify things and keep in mind the core features of the effect. In the case of our butterflies, what makes us feel the motion pattern and behavior of a butterfly are its wing beats, and its erratic motion. All right, we know what we need to do. Now we need to know what we are going to do exactly. How can we make these features in our shader? We can rely on a shader feature called Vertex Offset or Vertex Displacement. This feature allows us to move around vertices of 3D meshes. We will animate the border vertices of a 3D plane where the wings will be located, to first animate the wing bit of a butterfly, and after that, offset randomly the entire plane up and down to simulate the erratic motion. With some random direction and velocity that will be applied in our Niagara emitter, this will do the trick just fine. So to summarize, to make our butterfly component, we need an alpha blend transparent model with vertex offset features, a custom 3D plane, a butterfly texture, and a Niagara emitter. To better visualize what we'll be doing when creating our butterfly shader, we'll first create our butterfly texture and 3D plane. For the butterfly texture, we need a symmetrical back view of the butterfly. You can either end paint it yourself, or use an image on the internet that is under a Creative Commons license. In my case, I pick this picture of Morpho Digius Back, a picture taken by TT Desquare available on Wikipedia. After I've downloaded this texture, I need to make few adjustments to it to make it work in our shader later on. Specifically, keep the interesting use variations in the RGB channels and have an opacity mask of the butterfly stored in the textures alpha channel. In Photoshop, Create a 512 by 512 document. Import and resize your butterfly texture to make it fit inside the canvas. Right after that, right click on your new butterfly layer and select a rasterize layer to be able to edit it. We'll use the magic wand tool with a tolerance around 15, 
to select and erase the white background first. Just after this step, we reselect the entire image with the magic wand tool, right click in our canvas, and click on Select Inverse to invert our selection to get the shape of a butterfly. In the channel window, create a new channel. Paint your selected butterfly shape in white with the brush tool, and paint in black undesirable elements such as this little note that we don't want in our texture. That's our opacity mask. Now you can export our butterfly texture in TIFF with the alpha channel export option ticked and import it in our Unreal project. We got our texture done. Now we switch to Blender to create our 3D butterfly plane. First, add a 3D plane to your scene. Then, with the loop tool, Insert an edge loop at the center of your plane on the X axis and bevel it. This part of the mesh will be the body of the butterfly, the part that isn't moving during the wing beat animation. And this part, the wings of a butterfly. These parts will be moving up and down thanks to the wing beat animation we're going to make in our shader in a moment. The wing beat animation through vertex offset might look a bit stiff with just a simple quad for wings. If you want, you can smooth it up by adding an edge loop near the outer edges of the plane for each wing. And finally, to get the right orientation of our texture on our plane, we'll go to the UV editing tab and apply a minus 90 degree rotation on the Y axis on our entire UV island. We can now export our mesh from Blender to Unreal Engine. Okay, we got our texture and our 3D mesh. Time to create our butterfly model. After you've created and opened your model in the model editor window, in the detail window, set the blend mode to masked and the shading model to unlit. We choose Masked as our transparency type because it is a light transparency type performance-wise. We don't have partially transparent part in our texture. Remember, we only got opaque part, white, and transparent part, black. No in-between with gray gradient. Also, we don't want our particles to be affected by the lighting of our scene. It will make our model even lighter performance-wise. And since we want to be able to see our butterflies from every side, we will need from both front and back faces of our mesh to be rendered. So we'll tick the double sided option. We'll need to reference our texture first. So drag and drop our butterfly texture from our content browser directly in our graph window. We then right click on the texture sample node and select Convert to Parameter. Being a parameter, this node will allow us to reference, if we want, a different butterfly texture on each model instances that we might want to create later on. We want to be able to tint our particles color while keeping our texture's base color use variations. So we'll add a particle color node to our graph. To control the color of our particle, we'll connect the RGB channel output of the particle color node through a multiply node to the RGB output of our texture simple node and link the result to the emissive input of the master node. To apply the opacity mask of your texture to our particles, we'll connect the alpha output of the texture sample node to the opacity mask input of the master node. Alright, we got the basic stuff done. Now, we want to have a preview of the model on our 3D mesh directly in our preview window. For that, in your content browser, select your butterfly 3D plane. And back in our model editor window, click on this icon. We should have now a preview of our custom 3D plane with our butterfly texture applied on it. Now, we'll go to the real challenge of this model the multiple vertex offset features. 
We'll first work on the up and down movement of the entire plane. We'll call it the erratic movement for short. And then on the wing beat animation. For the erratic movement, we need to make a looping animated sine wave that will push all vertices of our plane alongside the normals. Since we are working on a plane with default normals, this means vertices will be pushed up or down on the Z axis in Unreal Engine. We also want to control through dynamic parameters in our Niagara emitter how strong and fast the up and down erratic movement will be. Same thing for the wing beat animation. So, we'll first set up our dynamic parameter node. After we've added the dynamic parameter node, we'll take the time to rename all outputs. This will be helpful when we'll edit the values in our Niagara emitter later on. For the wing beat animation, we got the red output. It will control the same wavelength. Or how slow or fast the wing beat animation is. We'll name it Wings Animation Multiplier. And the green output, it will control the vertex offset intensity. Or how far vertices of our plane will be pushed. We'll name it Wings Offset Intensity. For the erratic movement animation, we got the blue output. Just like the red output, it will control the sine wavelength. Or how slow or fast the up and down erratic movement is. We name it position time multiplier. And finally, we have the gray output. Just like the green output, it will control the vertex offset intensity. Or how strong the up and down movement of our entire plane is. We name it position offset intensity. Alright, so let's first make the looping animated sine wave. This will be the base of our vertex offset feature. Add a time node and multiply it by the blue output of the dynamic parameter node. Link the result to a sine node. And this is our basic animated sine wave, with its wavelengths controlled by the blue output of the dynamic parameter node. Now, to push our vertices alongside our normal, add a vertex normal node and multiply it by our animated sine wave node setup. Multiply then the result to the gray output of the dynamic parameter node to control the offset intensity later on in our Niagara particle system emitter. If we connect this group of nodes to the world position offset input of the master node, we can see our mesh being entirely pushed up and down. Nice. We got our erratic movement setup done. It's quite slow at the moment, but we'll be able to play around the intensity and speed of this feature directly in our particle system emitter later on. We can select the entire node group, right-click on a node, and select Create Comment from Selection. We have our setup groups into a comment box. This will allow us to easily identify each feature we're going to make in our shader. We got our erratic movement setup done. We'll now continue on with the wing beat animation setup. And luckily for us, it starts off with the same principle than the erratic movement. A looping animated sine wave pushing up vertices, except in the middle part of our swinging mesh where the butterfly body is supposed to be displayed. We need this part to stay static. We can already copy and paste the entire node setup used for the erratic movement feature and replace the blue and gray outputs of the dynamic parameter node by the red and green ones. They will respectively control how fast and strong the wing beat A movement will be. We got the basic looping sine wave ready. Now we need to make the center part of the 3D plane static. 
The center of the mesh and of our UVs is where is displayed the body of a butterfly, the parts that need to be static. We just make a reflective gradient with a black part at the center, we set the offset intensity of the center of our plane to zero, and thus make this part of the mesh static. To make this mask, add a text code node. Mask out the green channel. Add minus 0.5. Multiply it by a property that will control the softness of the mask. Multiply the result by itself. And saturate the output of the last multiply node to constrain the values between 0 and 1. And that's it! You should get the nice centered linear gradient mask in the saturate nodes preview window. Alright, we'll now apply this mask to our animated sine wave by multiplying both node setups. To check if everything's working, try to connect the result to the word position offset input of the master node. We should be able to preview our butterfly with its little wings animated going up and down to the initial horizontal position. And now, to add the erratic movement to the entire vertex offset setup, just add the erratic movement setup node to the wingbit vertex offset animation setup and link the result to the word position offset input of the master node. And that's it! We made our butterfly shader. Our butterfly should be moving up and down with its wing animated. We got everything ready to create our nearest system and our first emitter. We want this emitter to continually spawn our 3D plane with variations in size, lifetime, velocity, and direction. In the system overview, we right click and select Add an emitter. By chance, we already got a good template close to what we want in terms of particles behavior, the hanging particulates template. So, we'll choose this one. We'll have to tweak some parameters to fit our needs though. First, we delete any unnecessary modules. So, let's get rid of the scale color, scale sprite size, aerodynamic drag, and wind force modules. Then, let's focus on the visual rendering of our butterflies. Delete the sprite renderer module and replace it by a mesh renderer module instead. In the meshes parameter, Assign our custom 3D plane, click the Enable Override Material option, and assign our butterfly material we made a minute ago. Then, set the facing mode to velocity to make our butterfly's particles align with the direction they are heading towards. In the initial particle module, we'll apply two random colors to our butterflies to have view variations. And we are going to make it through the use of custom user parameters. That way, we don't have to create multiple Niagara systems in our content browser to have different tinted butterfly particle systems. We can directly set different colors for each instance of a particle system and even edit these values in blueprints. To do that, we set the color mode to random range and go to the user parameter stage of our Niagara overview node. This is where we'll add our custom user exposed color values. Click on the plus icon and select linear color. We need two of these. You can select two different colors to tint our already colored butterfly texture. Feel free to choose any color value, depending on your preferences and level's color mood. My level is being quite bluish, I go for a greenish and reddish tint. We now drag and drop those user parameters values directly from the parameter window to our color minimum and maximum parameter. We'll be able to edit these colors by selecting any instance of our Niagara system under the user parameters category. We can also set the mesh sizes of our particles right there. A random high range of uniform value should look good, with small and big butterflies. 
variations is a key factor here. It is important here to note that all values that I'll be using during this video are related to my 3D mesh and level size and mood. So feel free to adjust those to fit your needs. In the shape location module, you can choose any shape primitive you want. It's up to you and your needs. In the spawn rate module, we'll edit the spawn rate value accordingly to our shape location radius to avoid having too few or too much butterflies on screen. In the particle update stage, we'll add a scale mesh size module to make the spawn and despawn of our butterflies more subtle. We'll set the scale factor parameter type to vector from curve. Make a nice table holding bridge. That way, our butterflies will grow up and shrink down quickly and maintain 100% of their size for most of their lifetime. Before tackling the behavior of our butterflies, we'll set up the strength and speed of our vertex offset shader features by adding in the particle update stage the dynamic model parameters module. Here, We'll want all parameters types to be random range floats and tweak values to our earth content to find the right range for the intensity and speed of the wing beat animation and erratic movement of our butterflies. Once you're done with it, it's finally time to make our butterflies move. For that, in the particle update stage, you can either add a vortex velocity module to make your butterflies fly around a single or multiple axis or add a curl noise force to make them fly in random direction. In our case, let's add the vortex velocity module. In this module, we'll set the velocity amount parameter type to random range float to have a lot of variations. After trying out different values, we should have a starting point for a butterfly particle system emitter where our butterflies are flying around and facing the direction they are heading towards. One final touch to our Niagara emitter. For our upcoming components, such as Trail or Fairy Dust, we need to have access to our butterflies' data, like their color or position. In the particle update stage, we'll add a Generate Location Event module. We'll also go to the Emitter Properties stage and tick the required space instance ID's parameter. This will be useful later on. And with that done, after renaming our bottle emitter, we got our main component done. Isn't it beautiful already? We'll continue this tutorial video by making these trays left behind by our little butterflies. To create this trade component, we'll reuse the basic alpha blend module we've made in previous tutorials. If you want to see the step-by-step -step creation process for this material, you can check the Sparks tutorial video at 1 minute and 42 seconds. We'll also need to create a very simple trail texture in Photoshop and to make a single Niagara emitter that will generate set trails and link the emitting starting point to the position of our butterflies. We'll start by making the trail texture. When making trail texture, there are multiple things to take in account. Specifically, will the texture be stretched or tied over the under trail, and where is located the head and the tail of the trail on its texture? In our case, our texture will be stretched over the entire trail. We want this trail texture to be soft, with no hard cut at the top and bottom of the texture. The head of the trail will be on the left side of the texture, and the end of it on the right side. So, we'll paint our gradient's highest value on the left and make it gradually fade when it starts to lean to the right. In Photoshop, create a 512 by 512 document. Use a simple soft brush, apply one big stroke on the left on the canvas, and use the eraser tool with a soft brush to erase part of the left, top, and bottom of the texture. And that's basically it. After we've imported our texture, we'll be able to assign it in our alpha blend model instance. Alright, we got our transparent alpha blend model instance with our trail texture applied onto it. Time to get back into our Niagara system. 
we want this emitter to spawn a trail that shares the same colors as our butterflies and to emit set trails from their current location. We'll add an emitter in the system overview next to our butterfly emitter and choose an empty template. First, let's get rid of the sprite renderer module and add a ribbon renderer instead. We'll assign our custom trail model in the model slot. We won't see our trails right away for particles need to be moving to generate set trails. So, we'll just quickly set up the link between our trails and our butterflies' positions before tweaking anything related to our trace visual rendering. Go to the emitter property stage, tick the request persistent IDs parameter, and then click on the plus stage icon and select event handler. In this new event handler stage, we'll add a receive location event. In the event handler properties, we'll source the location event of our butterflies. Set the execution mode to spawned particles and set the spawn number to 1. Now we should be able to see trays emitted behind our butterflies. We want those trays to have the same colors as our butterflies, or should I say, to be tinted by our custom user exports properties we made earlier. So we'll go to the receive location event and in the color parameter we set apply and untick alpha, where we set specific alpha values for our trays later. Now, let's custom the visual rendering of our trays. In the initials particle module, we'll set a standard lifetime value to let our trays exist long enough that we can see them, but not too long to avoid having too much things displayed on screen. We'll set a uniform value in the ribbon width parameter to control the size of our trail. In the particle update stage, we can add the scale ribbon width and scale color modules. In the scale ribbon width module, we set the ribbon width scale parameter type to float from curve and click on the smooth frame down curve template. To have our trace head at 100% of its size, and its tail at 0%. Finally, in the scale color module, we set the color and alpha of our trails. We want our trails to have the same color as our butterflies, with the same U variations we set up earlier with our custom user exposed color properties. To do that, we need our trails base color to be close to the color of our butterfly texture. That way, each trail will have a color close to its butterfly particles color, including tint variations. All thanks to the receive location event module, specifically the colors parameter that will apply the tint variation we made for butterflies to our trails. So we'll set the scale RGB parameter type to make vector from linear color RGB and register a color close to our base butterfly texture. In my case, some kind of light blue. And we want these trays to be quite solo, so we we'll set a low alpha value. And that's it, we got our trail emitter done. Don't forget to rename your emitter. Now, we'll focus on making those little soft dot particles bind our butterflies. This part of our effect, just like the trail component, is quite subtle and secondary. To make these soft dot particles, we save production time once again by using the alpha blend material we used for the trail component. And reuse a soft dot texture that we had the opportunity to make in previous tutorials. If you don't know how to do such texture, you can check the Sparks tutorial video on the channel. At 3 minutes and 47 seconds, you'll find all the details on how to make such texture in no time. So, we'll just duplicate the trail material and register the soft dot texture in it. Once it is done, don't forget to rename the metal instance. Back into our Niagara system, 
We want our soft dot particle emitter to continuously spawn multiple moving particles by our butterflies. We'll add an emitter in the system overview and select an empty template. We'll start by editing the visual rendering and behavior of our soft particles before linking them to our butterfly's position and color. To see our particles temporary in the emitter update stage, we'll add a spawn rate module with a small spawn rate value. We'll delete it later when we link our soft dot particles to our butterfly. In the sprite renderer module, we'll assign our soft dot model instance in the model parameter. In the initial particle module, we'll be able to edit and give a lot of variations to our particles. We'll set a high lifetime range to our particles to make some last a long time and some not so much. We we'll then go to the sprite size parameter, select random uniform, and register a high range sprite size values to have big and small soft dot particles. Then, in the particle update stage, we'll add the scale color module. Just like we did for our trails, the base color of our particle should be close to the color of our main butterfly texture before getting tinted by our exposed color properties. That way, our particles should have similar colors with our trails and butterflies. We'll make our soft dot particles flicker in the scale alpha parameter. For that, set the parameter type to float from curve, add a bunch of keys and make some goes up and other goes down. This effect will reinforce a certain fairy dust powdery aspect to our soft dot particles. The visual rendering of our particles is done. We'll get to the behavior now. In the particle spawn stage, add a shape location and an add velocity modules. In the add velocity module, we'll fix the unmet dependencies issue by clicking on fix issue. We'll set the velocity mode to from point and set a small speed value to allow our particles to be slightly pushed away from the spawning point. In the shape location module, we'll set the sphere radius to a very small value. The goal would be to have our sphere radius to be a bit smaller than the butterfly's body. That way, our particles will be spawned around the body of the butterfly instead of being spawned only at the center of its body. Alright, now we got to link our particles to our butterfly's positions. For that, we'll first go to the emitter property stage and tick the requires persistence IDs parameter. And then, click on the plus stage icon and select event handler. In this new event handler stage, we'll add a receive location event. In the event handler properties, we'll choose the location event of our butterflies Set the execution mode to spawned particles and set the spawn number to 1. And boom! We got our little dot particles emitted behind our butterflies. Now, we want those particles to have the same color than our butterflies. So, we'll go to the receive location event and in the color parameter, we set apply and untick alpha since we already set our flickering alpha effect through the scale color module. We cannot delete our spawn rate module. We've used arbitrary values until we've created all our emitters. So now will be the perfect time for you to tweak some of your emitters values, such as particles or ribbon sizes and color, dynamic parameters range, shape locations radius, or number of particles being emitted to better fit your need for your level. Don't forget to rename your emitter. And we got our last particle emitter done. We now have cute little butterflies flying around, leaving a trail and some dusty fairy powder behind them. And that concludes this video. I hope you like this tutorial, and I see you in the next one. Bye!